Hello, I'm Greg Malin, and welcome to Cinema Sit Down, a show where myself and others come together to talk movies. For today's episode, we'll be discussing writer and director Wes Anderson's newest star studded film, The French Dispatch. The picture follows several stories being told by writers of a newspaper for its final issue. I'm joined today by Cooper Tennant and Mateus Bueno. How are you guys doing? Man, I'm doing great. A new Wes Anderson movie is like a, it's like a, it's like a big slice of chocolate cake. And oh, buddy, I loved this piece of chocolate cake, let me tell you. I'm doing good as well. Finally, you know, doing my cinema sit-down debut, talking about a movie that I love. And one of my favorite directors, so I'm happy to be here. Well, that's great. So uh, you guys already sort of spoiled the opening segment, but initial thoughts. What did you guys think of The French Dispatch? I thought it was great. Uh, I, when I first heard that Wes Anderson was doing an anthology film, uh, I wasn't sure how I felt. I knew I was excited for it, but I was a little nervous because his films are normally big ensembles, but normally characters get to build throughout the film. So I wasn't sure how you would do in short term, uh, short form uh, entertainment. But I think I think he knocked it out of the park, and it's. I mean, as of right now, it's my third favorite film that, that's come out this year. So, uh, you know, nothing but praise from me. I'm uh, also a huge fan of this movie. I mean, if you know, if you talk to me before, you know that like I'm a huge Wes Anderson guy. Like he's one of my favorite directors, and I think this movie is just him on his most stylistic moment. You know, doing what he does best. But, you know, the you know picture frames, like, you know, and the uh, colors, and in this case, the lack of color, which we're going to talk about today. And I think he does it pretty well. And I really like the anthology thing. I actually didn't know it was going to be an anthology until I walked in on it. I mean, I knew there was like, you know, a huge cast of characters, a, a lot of people. But I thought it was really interesting, this anthology format. I was surprised that he hadn't done it before. And I'm looking forward to what he's going to do next. Well, I'm, I'm really glad that you guys liked it. And let me just say, I think, I think that Wes Anderson is one of the most talented directors working today. With that said, this movie is garbage, all right? Let me tell you. I, I thought this could have been so good, and it was just a massive disappointment to me. I thought it was a mess on many levels. And uh, let's just get into it. So, Mateus, oh, you, you mentioned the black and white, and let's start with some nitty-gritty production details. This film is partially black and white and partially in color. And, you know, it's one thing like, a, you know, there's segments of color, and then, oh, we flash back to black and white. But no, this movie, it's... It's so messy, it changes from black and white to in color in the same scene. Thoughts on that? See, you mentioned the mess, but I think I kind of like the mess. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it shows like, it's like, you know, a very chaotic time, like, you know, and it's a very, in itself, a very chaotic movie. So I kind of like this mess, and the, you know, the change from black and white to color, at most, doesn't really bother me, and I think it does for some really great moments. I won't spoil anything for the people watching. But there are some great use of the black and white. I don't think they use it all the time. Sometimes it, it does feel kind of random. I agree with you. Like it, it catches you out of nowhere. But when it works, man, it really works, and I, I really like that. Especially for the um, w the first story with the artist. Uh, you know, where we actually this is not really a spoiler, but when you actually like get the review of like the paintings and like what they actually look like in color, I thought that was really effective. And I, it's kind of like catches you by surprise. I like that. Yeah. I um. I, I'm kind of in between both of you guys. I will say that the random uh, changes, I'm sure it wasn't random. You know, he's an auteur. He, he has a, an idea of why it's switching back and forth. He um, usually would. <laughs> well, I, I think it would have been nice to maybe get uh, some kind of uh, running, like, you know, reason as to why it switches back and forth. Um, I'm not really sure why it did. It made for some interesting visuals. You know, I'll agree with Mateus there. Like, the reveal of... Of the color of the paintings you've been seeing the whole uh, story in color at the very end, I think was really cool. Um, but I, I kind of agree. You know, I would have liked the, some some reason behind it, and it did seem seemingly ran random. But knowing Wes Anderson, I feel like there has to be some kind of reason behind it. And if that's the vision that that man has, I'm who who am I to say no? <laughs> All am right. I? All right. Well, I will say so. You know, uh, with you guys mentioned the the reveal of those paintings, or whatever, and uh, you know that makes sense. What doesn't make sense is like in the middle of a story, we cut to like a prostitute, Saoirse Ronan, and suddenly like character who has no prominence, and somebody's just like, "Can I see your eyes?" And then we cut to color, and we see it's just to me, it's it's unfocused in many respects. This movie, which is something that I never thought I would say about Wes Anderson, because he's somebody who's very, very precise in pretty much every other movie he's done besides this. But I think that the plot, it's sort of a, it's just, I don't know what he, 
I mean, he apparently said this is like a love letter to journalists. I didn't really get that. I just got like, a, hey, newspapers are cool. <laughs> and, I, I would uh, agree with you there. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, it, and we, we, when we went to go see the French Dispatch, uh, they gave us physical copies of the, of the, of the magazine. Um, and they have a whole two pages in there dedicated. It lists out the journalists that, were, that he inspired him and, and who he was dedicating it to. And while I haven't read uh, that, that sprawl, it, it, it kind of feels like it's good that he's giving acknowledgment to these journalists that I'm sure paved ground in, in, uh, in the world of journalism. But uh, it, does, it does feel like, like I, I didn't watch this and I was like, oh boy, journalism. I watched this and I was like, that's a good movie. So I don't know. No, I thought it, I liked the, the whole journalism aspect, especially you know, with, the, with Bill Murray playing this, like, you know, the editor in chief of the, the French Dispatch. And you know the story kind of following and like as a tribute to him and as a tribute to journalism and I thought that was really interesting and also I'd just like to go back. You mentioned the eyes thing. <laughs> I thought I actually thought that was a really good use of the change to color, but you know that you know our opinions may differ on that. But I did think it was interesting the whole journalism aspect and getting the physical copy, which I now have framed on my wall. <laughs> mm -hmm. I took but, three. Yeah, I took you, three. You were just you were just <laughs> grabbing them. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I I thought that was an interesting premise and you can tell that Wes Anderson was passionate about it when he did it. All right, all right, yeah. So, well, I will say, um, so one thing, the Bill Murray thing, which uh, to me, I, I just imagine with his role the movie that this should have been, which is, you know, it's supposed to be, so like the very beginning says like, oh, Bill Murray died. He's the guy who run this newspaper. And, uh, you know, you may think like his role, which it sort of is like he's like talking to the writers like about their stories and whatever, but he's also like barely in it at all, it just shows up like a, hey, cut that paragraph then. <laughs> you would think that it may be something about like really showing the way that he impacted them and f and like brought together, but so to me, you said that uh, you can tell that Wes Anderson is passionate about this stuff. And I will agree with that. Like I felt, I did feel genuine passion from Wes Anderson here, but I thought that uh, a lot of the proceedings felt like they were devoid of life in a way, actually, I know you guys won't agree with that, and you'll counteract <laughs> it shortly. And I will, there is actually one part of this film that I really like, and I'll get to that in a bit. But to me, the devoid of life thing really came in, where I was thinking like, eh, this is all right, you know, I'm not loving it, but I'm not. And then we got to the Francis McDormand, Timothy Chalamet story. I oh, oh, hated God. this story. Wow. I hated it so much, because, so first off, it's, it's about like, a, oh, this group of young protesters. Let me tell you something. There is no group in the world more passionate and full of life and fury and all the, all the emotions than young protesters. These people were so boring. I thought that they were just, they had no Greg, personality. They're they are French. They are French. They're, they're French. French. They're, they're French. French. <laughs> French people are not known for not being you know, very exciting people, you know, and I think they captured that well. Are you dunking on French people? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, and I think. You're, you're wrong on that. <laughs> I, I, I will I'll, I will say this. That that section of the film, the third, the, the sec, that was the second the one. The second correct? story. Yes. It was my least Technically favorite. Technically the third story, because it's a really short one. Oh, yeah, with Owen Wilson. Wilson. I interrupted your point. No, Go no, on. you're good. I yeah. love the Owen Wilson yeah. one. We're on that a bike, right. by the way. I thought I that, was awesome. that was awesome. I wanted more. At first, when actually, when that first happened, I thought each story was going to be that short. And I got a little, like, I was intrigued, but also a little nervous. Well, um, I, if I can just briefly yeah, interrupt, because I also did think, like, why was that one story, like, two minutes, and all the others were, like, half an hour? Yeah. Was, was Wes Anderson, like, this movie's a little too short. Owen, can you do this, like, one <laughs> scene for me? Go so he on. was like, I guess we have to put Owen Wilson in the movie, right? <laughs> I'm Wes Anderson. He has to be in here somewhere. <laughs> right. Um, I, I will agree. I think the second one was probably my least favorite. Um, I felt, well, well, I still loved it. It was still, like, you know, it, it's like... For me, the rankings, at least, you know, I liked the painting one, and then I liked the the cooking one with the police uh, escape, and then this one last. But they're very close. I'll say they're very close. Um, but I, I just felt it did it did lag a little bit, despite me loving Francis McDormand and me loving. Uh, that, this is actually the first movie I've seen where Timothy Chalamet like is a, is acting in it because I haven't seen <laughs> Lady Bird, I haven't seen Little Women. I had seen I've seen Interstellar, but he's a kid in that movie. He's not really doing much. Um, and then I saw Dune like a couple days later, where he's literally the main guy. But uh, I thought he did really good. You know, I thought all the, all the all the pieces fell into place. I just didn't find it super intriguing. I mm. thought the ending was good. I thought the ending was 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 a nice. It felt like a Wes Anderson ending because it's a Wes uh, Anderson movie. But uh, it didn't it didn't quite hit the same. I didn't get the same excitement that I got from the other two. 
I actually thought that one was the more exciting one for me, watching it. <laughs> so that's why when I hear Greg being like saying I hate it, I'm like, wow, that's kind of offensive because that was I, honestly I think the you know the Timothy Chalamet one with Frank McMillan, I thought that was some of the you know, ha I I agree like I really I just really like that for some reason you know Wes Anderson has this thing where he likes to pair it. Uh, young young boys <laughs> and old ladies. I don't know if that's a personal thing for him. I don't know. I'm not going to question him on that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I thought there was some you know really good chemistry with them, and I really like. I think that's the one in terms of because this movie is a lot about like world building. Like he does a, you know a lot of world building in this, and I can see <laughs> Craig getting angry about it right now. But um, I think this one is the most world building, and I think we can actually get an insight into this like you know, the young revolution, you get the contrast between like, you know, how an old journalist sees this young people and their ideals. And that's the thing about a revolution. It's like, um, there's like a contrast, like everyone's trying to fight for something, but they all have like their different ideas. Mm -hmm. And also, um, you get like, I gotta say, this one has one of my favorite scenes in the movie where they reveal the, like the cafe or like the, the club where they, where the, the ch not the children, but like, the, you know, the young people meet. And it does like on a very like theatrical way where you see the doors open. So it uses literally like set pieces to do that. And I remember just being in the theater and being like, wow, getting off my chair <laughs> seeing that. Because I was like, that was so cool. With the music and all and everything, I think that was one of my favorite scenes in the movie. And it came from that, which appears to be your least favorite. But I, I want to <laughs> throw up hearing you spend all that time talking about how good this segment was. You, if you picked any other segment, I would have been like, all right, fine. But that one, I just thought. Uh, it so boring. I, Francis McDormand is one of my favorite actors of all all time, mm -hmm. I thought she was a zero in this. I, I thought wow. I saw no life at all from her or Timothy Chalamet. I thought they were so boring in this. I just I I watched that segment and uh, and I just thank God for the next segment because I'm going to say what my favorite favorite one was. <coughs> uh, it was the one with Jeffrey Wright. Jeffrey Wright is is always a remarkable talent. I love that guy. And, uh, and that was the one part of the movie where I saw, oh my God, like a real personality or whatever. Like uh, he was like, so this is all like narrated by like uh, the writers of the newspaper. And it's like, so Frances McDormand, for instance, narrates the other one, which she's just like an outside observer then. Like she's not actively involved in it. And I feel like that causes the problem for me with the lack of passion. Like, cause she's not in this story. She's just telling it this one. Jeffrey Wright is very actively like involved the whole time, and I felt like we were learning about him in it, and I thought he played it wonderfully. Like I have, listen, I'm I know I'm taking a bit of a dookie on this movie. <laughs> but I, have, I have nothing yeah. but praise for the wonderful Mr. Jeffrey Wright. I, I love Jeffrey Wright, and I honestly do think like he, where in, in the first story, in the first one, my favorite one, Tilda Swinton is is the writer and narrator, and she's not in the actual story hardly at all. Like most of her mm -hmm. scenes are her narrating, which I think is fine. Like they cut back and forth. It's like she's giving a TED she talk. She also just name drops like a weird like sexual abuse thing in the That's middle. That's yeah, yeah. Out of nowhere, that yeah. was a little weird. <laughs> that but was like, a little strange. I, that yeah. Was, uh, yeah. But she takes topical. a break, drinks a little bit of wine, yeah. and then goes back to but it. But I thought her character was cool. Yeah. I, I liked that. I liked Tilda Swinton in this, sure. I yeah. thought uh, she and Adrian Brody were both fun. Mm -hmm. They didn't, to me, like I said, it, Jeffrey Wright is the only one that really made any kind of emotional mm -hmm. impact on me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just like the guy a lot, but yeah. uh, like, I thought I, I'm, I'm happy that it. Jeffrey Wright's character as the journalist wasn't relegated to just being the narrator of the story cuz I I love Jeffrey Wright. Like I think he's amazing in literally anything he's in. Like he's in the he's in Hunger Games 2 and he's like, <laughs> he like he like kills it. Um but no, I mean he he's amazing and like the way he acts like with his eyes I think are is, is like some of the best acting, with at least eye acting, I've ever seen. Um, but he's just, he's great. And also, he has such a good voice. Like, mm. I, you know, listening to him narrate Rich. anything is nice. Like molasses, or, mm. wait, no, that's not right. Yeah. Oh, whatever. <laughs> um, but, uh, okay. all right, go yeah. on. So my favorite one was the, uh, was the very first one with the, with uh, uh, what's his name? Benicio Del Toro, with, as, as, the, as the starving artist. Uh, and what's her name? The the, the uh, Leia Sidhu. Yes. I think that's how it's pronounced. Yes. Uh, who surprised me? I didn't realize she was in this until uh, until I saw her on the screen. Um, She's in it quite a lot. She is. Yeah. <laughs> quite a lot of her is in it. Wow. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, but no, I I really loved Benicio del Toro as as like the crazy artist. Um, I love Adrian Brody as well. And uh, oh my God, Henry Winkler's in this. Like he he shows up. He's one of the uncles, which I thought was really fun. But I, I just love the, I think honestly, of all of them, 
the, the story progression in the first one uh, worked the best for me in terms of, uh, it, it, was, it was the most Wes Anderson in terms of the story in my opinion, because it was kind of like, just kind of plodding along and not much happens, and at the end, it kind of rushes quickly, which I don't personally dislike. Um, whereas in the second one, it was kind of a, a, a lot of meandering, and then in the last one, it's mostly fast-paced. Most of, most of that last story is fast-paced, at least for me, um, which isn't a knock against the other two. But the first one uh, worked the best for me. Like visually, like the scene, there's a scene where uh, Benicio del Toro's in a wheelchair and he's getting stuff thrown at him, and th they like fix the camera to the back of the wheelchair, and, like, and all the all the frozen moments. Yeah, no, the the way they do like <coughs> um, action in this movie, I like. I mean, it kind of changes in between, but like <laughs> when they do the thing, th I mean, this is also in the trailer, but when they show an action scene where it's supposed to be like, you know, Wes Anderson does action like he approaches a different way. But I, we see in this one, like we have that scene where, like in the first one, where they do action, it's sort of all frozen. So you just mm -hmm. see them, like you know, fighting and just kind of like imply what's happening as the cameras go through. And then on the other one, where you have an at, like a big chase sequence, and it just becomes. I don't know. This is a spoiler. Like, I, it, no, it's no, a, no, this is not. This is not. There's a spoiler. no plot to this movie, really. Okay. So say I mean, anything. It's you know theatrical, but it just becomes. Uh, they should show an action scene where it just becomes animated halfway through. Mm -hmm. And I thought. I mean, I've, I've, I've spoken to Cooper this, about this before, but you know, it just gives the audience some wonder and like we want more of a 2D animated mm -hmm. Wes Anderson movie because it's I a really it. cool like and I spoke to one of my professors here and he said like oh maybe they just did that because of budget <laughs> and they couldn't uh, you know show like a full action sequence of that size and they did animate it but I thought it worked really well mm -hmm. I thought it was interesting yeah, well so uh, so I will say so with like the action and stuff like uh, you know you mentioned stuff like I liked the animated mm -hmm. part of that and I like that sort of a freeze Kind of freeze frame yeah, thing there because it's like it's but like it's all the actors are just they're like you can see them moving a little bit so they're just holding still yeah. which I think is honestly more effective than if you would have just frozen them you yeah. know because then you can move throughout uh, the space yeah. but continue but uh, yeah so I thought like so there's some stuff like uh, you know Wes Anderson like I said he's a fantastic filmmaker and these there's all these like great sort of visual moments but then there's ones that to me like it feels sort of unfocused like so of course so Wes, Wes Anderson is famous for like a, the symmetrical shot like straight on at somebody and then there's a few shots here and there uh, where it's just like a random like tracking shots and it's all like uh, like uh, blurry and all that I'm thinking like that's so jarring against everything else and I don't felt like it was meant to come across that way then and then so but with so the, the animated chase, which to me has by far the funniest joke in it. Uh, uh, but so with that, like it's, this movie does a weird thing where it just like suddenly it's telling a story and it's, you know, these are all short stories then. So, you know, you think that you want to devote all of your time to just that one story. And then suddenly it uh, just changes to something else. So like the second one, that god awful second one, uh, you know, rather than developing the characters that we have, we spend like a five minutes on like one side character to show like a, a play about like him and his experience that has no real effect on the plot and it just goes on and on and I'm thinking like, uh, why can't we learn something about our main characters instead? I'll say, I'll, I'll compare, I'll compare, I'll say that The French Dispatch is Wes Anderson's uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood as, the, as it was to Tarantino because Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was Tarantino doing everything that people like and also dislike about Tarantino. Um, and there's a lot of meandering, like it's a really long movie and it's just a lot of filler. It does flesh out the world, but it is a lot of just people doing things. Um, and I'll agree that in this movie, there is a lot of filler that looks really pretty. And it, it you know, it's like you, the acting's really good, but it, it's not a lot of, you know, the plot moving along. Um, and I don't personally mind that. Like I didn't mind that for once in a time in Hollywood because I, I personally like Tarantino. Um, and I definitely don't mind it here because I like Wes Anderson. Um, honestly, like the the stage play scene that that Greg's talking about, like I watched that and I was like, well, now I just want to see like a stage play version of a Wes Anderson movie or Wes Anderson himself doing a stage play. I think would maybe maybe work out really well because he al he already uses so many like practical stage elements in his productions. Um, so I don't know. I think I think that'd be fun. I I, I really liked it. I thought it was. If cool. You couldn't tell. We do like Wes Anderson. Yeah. I like Wes Anderson, even if I'm saying some terrible things about him. You know? <laughs> I don't uh, know. I'm talking about the most Wes Anderson movie here, and you talking, you know, saying that you don't like it. I don't know. Uh, no, 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 no <laughs> because all right. So let's say you know, yeah. let's compare works then. So my favorite Wes Anderson movie, The Grand Budapest Hotel, and that is a film that, uh, to me, feels, even though 
you just need to see one shot of a Wes Anderson movie and you know it's a Wes Anderson movie. But to me, that feels so different because that is like teeming with like life. You're going on a journey with these characters, not just randomly hearing about, hey, here's uh, somebody who's not really uh, related to the plot or really does all that much. All right, that's them. Let's move on to this or whatever. Like, uh, and it's, I don't know, just, uh, just that Wes Anderson is very stoic, but his other works have a lot more heart than this. To me, like, this just felt hollow, like, uh, you know, with that Timothy Chalamet story, when he, like, was getting on that tower and whatever, this is not a script, but I was just thinking to myself, oh, God, just fall off and die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I, I mean, I'll, I'll say, like, my favorite Wes Anderson movie is The Life Aquatic, um, which is one that was not very well received when it first came out, but it's since... I, uh, I gathered that. The beanie, on. yeah. It's a different color, but it is... Actually, a I didn't gather that. I just figured it was a <laughs> reference. But. It, it is a little inspired. Um... But I, I love that movie uh, mostly because of, you know, the, the, the giant scenes that, that are featured, like when they rush the beach. And uh, I, I just felt like everything that I enjoyed about that movie was kind of reflected throughout this movie, which I guess makes sense because it's a Wes Anderson movie. But uh, I, I mean, I, I'm a little surprised that there are people who, who really don't enjoy this movie, even if they do like other Wes Anderson movies. And this isn't me saying that some people are real Wes Anderson fans and some people are fake Wes Anderson fans. <laughs> yes, why would you say something I like would that? never. I'm not going to gatekeep Wes Anderson. Come on now. I don't even know the guy. But uh, it, it's just for a movie that is so purely him, it surprises me that there are people that aren't aren't big fans of this movie. Yeah, who, who would you think? Well, <laughs> you know, let me say something, because you mentioned Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which I think that's a great movie, mm -hmm. but to me, that's one of my least favorite Tarantino movies, because it feels like the director just saying, like, uh, I'm just going to do stuff. I'm just going to do, like, sort of what I'm known for, just a uh, random, and nothing really happening the whole time. Like, this, I guess, has more plot than that movie? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it just kind of feels like there's not much point there. Like I said, you know, the theme of this is supposed to be like a, uh, I guess just a, hey, writers are cool and all that, but <laughs> that doesn't really, that doesn't really come across here because it's the, the stories aren't even really about the writers and like their real craft. It's just about like random other people that they followed around. Uh, you meant, so you uh, mentioned, uh, Greg, you mentioned that like uh, in this case you compare it to Tarantino's work where like he, you know, in his last movie, he does a lot of uh, you know, nothing, or, uh, you know, just more stylistic than just the actual story. And I think this movie does kind of the same thing, where, like, you know, focus on more on the world building and, you know, general, like, chapters than the actual characters. But I think it works in this case because he's working, like, it's, it's a 90-minute movie, and I think, you know, it's more of, like, a theatrical experience rather than, you know, in Tarantino what he does, you know, all his Tarantino stuff, which a lot of people like, and, you know, it works for some people. But I think Wes Anderson works in this case. It's more of a theatrical experience where, like, focus on this world building. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll agree with you, Greg. This is kind of a movie where stuff just kind of happens, it's a, it, which, which a lot of people aren't a fan of. But me personally, I'm totally okay with a movie that is mostly style, um, especially if it's a, a style that I enjoy. Uh, so I'm, I'm pr personally, I'm okay with that. And, and you have enlightened me a little bit. Maybe I can see a world where people who like Wes Anderson aren't big fans of this movie. Well, uh, I'm glad that we reached some kind of understanding then after violently disagreeing with each other this whole time. So, uh, the audience knows what all of us are going to say, but would you guys recommend this movie? Absolutely. <laughs> I, I would also absolutely recommend I mean, this movie. Yeah, it is. You know. Just to anybody. Yeah, honestly, yeah, it is just, even at the end of the day, if you, you know, if you, it's a fun time, and I think it, it's really enjoyable, and it looks cool, mm -hmm. so it's like, you know, it's like I said, it's literally like 90 minutes where you can, you know, look at pretty stuff and enjoy a nice world that Wes Anderson built, and with a lot of passion, so yeah, definitely recommend it. What about you? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, you know, so this is some, if you're not a fan of Wes Anderson, you're not going to like this movie. If you aren't familiar with his works, watch his better movies. And if you're a fan, maybe check it out. You might like it. You know, reviews are a bit on the mixed side. Uh, you know, I didn't like it, so I'm not going to recommend it. But I won't stop somebody from seeing it. I won't say that. But so that's our show. Uh, thank you, Cooper and Mateus. You guys did a great job, even if you disagreed with me. <laughs> and, you know, they both said that... Uh, they would recommend it. So by rules majority, I guess I now have to say, you know, go out and watch this movie because that's how that works, I guess. And normally I would close out this show by telling you to watch more episodes and other pirate TV content. But Which I'm you going do. to Yes, you should yeah. absolutely do that. <laughs>
but I'm going to break the norm, and I'm going to share a bit of trivia instead. And so it's about, uh, you know, Wes Anderson, the great, usually, Wes Anderson. And so back in the 90s, Wes Anderson was roommates with frequent collaborator Owen Wilson, who is in this movie, mm -hmm. and he's, he's good in it. Anyway, and the apartment room that they lived in had a faulty window. Anderson and Wilson's demands to have the window fixed fell on deaf ears. So they decided they would get it fixed by breaking into their own apartment, stealing items, and reporting it to the police. The plan was a failure, but it inspired Anderson to make a short film based off of it called Bottle Rocket, this short film was rejected by every festival Anderson submitted it to, and when he finally managed to pull together a screening, 80 people walked out. And that's what I wanted to do during the Timothy Chalamet and Francis McDormand section of this movie. That is our show. Thank you for watching.